Hey guys, welcome back to the latest episode of the Simmons Sporting Goods All Things Hunting Podcast. We got a special guest today, our good friend Chris Huckleby with Huck Outdoors. And appreciate you being here and taking your time to do a little talking about what, for those of the, the those that aren't familiar with the brand, what is Huck Outdoors and where did that start? It started from? in the living room. In the living <laughs> in room. In the living room. It's a family brand and just an idea after hunting season one year and three years ago has and it been that long three years that's awesome yep that's awesome so yep. uh and i mean what it is is a little lifestyle brand t-shirts hats uh some some hunting gear as well right and uh, we we sell extremely well here in the store i know you do all across the country yeah um who i mean what it's growing day by day it seems like some days it just i'm it's working me hard so yeah yeah, well, that's good. It keeps you out of trouble. Yeah, you're Fam- right. Who, well, do, I mean, who does the does you and your wife both do the designing? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Kids. Everybody has a little in, bit in family hands business. On. Yep. That's yep. great. We were in the dining room for two years. No dining room table. It was the folding table. Yeah. So I mean, when you say starting the living room, like go back, did you just we were, hit, uh, hit one of y'all one evening or one of the kids wanted to do it and y'all rolled with it or how did yeah. it go? We were sitting around cleaning up. I think it was mid-March. Goose season had just ended or we cleaning up the living room and Dawson come in one day and he was like, hey, we need to start a brand. I'm like, what kind of brand? He said, everyone's called you Huck all your life. They called me Huck all through baseball. And now Noah, my 11-year-old, they call him Huck. Yeah. So I'm like, what are you talking about a brand? You know, he's like, man, Let's do a brand. Let's brand our name and tell our story about what we like to do through shirts and hats. And right. How old is tr- Dawson? 23. 23. Yep. So yep. He's, he's hitting the business world, huh? So he already oh, yeah. graduated yep. engineering, working for Energy Corporation. So going to get married, yeah. real life. Fitting to, to get married. Uh, yep. Is he going to stay here in West Monroe? Yep. Or, okay. Bought him a little house out in Calhoun and. They fist and they get on the map. Does his wife help a little bit or yeah. fiance help a little bit with y'all? Oh, yeah. She's full of nursing and all. Everyone, it's all hands on. Everybody, we finally got a warehouse in town and bought a bunch of racks. And, and you got another full time job oh too. So God. it's not like this is all. Man, it's, man, that's how it all starts. I remember me and Kyle used to do duck calls and stuff a long time ago. Yeah. Oh, that's the life. Huh, huh. No, man, it's a grind. It keeps me up late. Uh, yeah. For sure. Yeah early late and i tell them all the time i'm like i wish i'd have started this when i was a young man i'm 45 years old out here trying to learn something brand new outside of what i do for the last 20 years so yeah it's been it's been we've had some struggles with it but then uh and every business kind of like everybody you know people buy from people and that's right they like what we got going on so y'all have done a great job with it because i mean you see the you see the brand all over the place and on the big stage and country music and everything else you see it's, hook outdoors what i would uh describe the brand as from the outside looking in or from or the, the product the shirts and stuff especially is uh is the guy harvey of now right it's guy harvey fishing shirts and stuff so yeah if you become as successful with it as as that we're gonna, we're gonna need a loan yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, hey that's really what we brought you here for that'd be nice proposition no. that would be nice what Man. did he you mentioned something while ago hook farms or a hook yeah so what you got I, I don't knew i mean i'll follow you on social media and all and yeah talked a little bit about it but uh a new line we did a new product line off of huck outdoors uh i grew up in farmable 30 miles from here and my dad always had a sign out by our gate at our pasture that said huck's farm we was you know cows everything so mm-hmm. i kept telling my wife last six months i'm like kind of want to relive that again you know yeah. Pe- people like that kind of stuff yeah Absolutely. so we kind of started doing a few designs and shifting shifting some stuff toward that and feed off the yellowstone popularity a little bit yeah got little us ranch a little, wear, yeah. ranch wear stuff yeah and it blew up i mean it's it's doing great that's well, good so just keeping it going what a lot of people tell us you know and people always ask us what keeps huck outdoors going what makes y'all a popular brand you know, people are asking us all the time, and the feedback that I get from stores and customers is that we don't just put five or six designs out and just let it sit. You know, we're all the time revolving new designs, new ideas, a new story. Sure. So people like it. Yeah, the shirts are they're comfortable too. They're not they're 
good quality, good quality. fabric garment. Yeah. I'm a, a product. I don't want to say guru. Maybe I'm OCD, but I like looking at products and seeing what makes it good, bad, right. ugly, and I, I like the the quality. You know, appreciate it. Using using good. That was good one of our goals. Stuff, yeah. Right. You know, no, it's good, good. If we're gonna be a, a young brand, we can't screw it up right off the bat. <laughs> That's so. right. And you still don't you don't have a, a rep group or a salesman no. or nothing. This is that uh, is the rep group. That's what I thought. Salesman. It's me. See, I, tra- I travel a lot, and I That's think we compare guy, notes on stores, and right, he gets around. Yep. Yeah. And still has another successful. And it's been a business and, as well. Well, and, and I've been so used to dealing with contractors mm-hmm. on sales. When I go to these stores. They're not contractors. Right. So it's it's a different, and just trying to get someone's, I need 30 seconds of your time, oh, man, it's man. tough. It is. Yeah, I have right. learned that it is so tough to go in a store. And sometimes we waste just, trips going down there, and they can't see you, and they won't see you. Uh-huh. And then you're like, well, i got to come End back. up just leaving them a name and yes. number. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a struggle. But it we're learning. Yeah. We're learning. Me and Cole's so. kind of first experience at that was, was at SHOT Show. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the first years that we going to, shot show and we were, at the time it's over 10 years ago we was helping with a duck call company call company and you thinking man we got in shot show we fixing to set the world on fire yeah you know we it's this it's over with now we yeah, fixing to just time. control every shelf everybody's fixing to buy and you get there and you go try to ask for somebody's attention there right. especially but anywhere like you talk about is yeah it's tough it, yeah it takes some some real legwork you got to get real work i mean yeah. it's they want to know that you're a popular brand that's going to be around a while right is what i'm and the people behind the brand, they want to know that you're a good person. Mm-hmm. You do what you going, what you say you're going to do. Yep. You know, and uh, that that goes a long way, especially in uh, the hunting and fishing community right. industry. Right. You know, if you're part of that, you got to be, like you said, rooted. Yeah. But be good, good to your core, and yep. it'll, it'll go a long be way. Be committed, not a fly by night deal. Right. Yep. I mean, that's right. How many of them do you see? Oh gosh. Around? And so. that's one of the first things they ask me. How yeah. long have you been around? And are you going to be one of these six-month guys that's here today and gone gone in six months? Right, right. right. I tell them, uh, Lord willing, I'm going to be here for a long time because yeah. I'm trying to leave something for my kids. <laughs> I'm trying to ride it all the way. I don't blame you. The designs look good. The shirts and stuff that, that I've seen, very well done and and well-timed when, yeah. when uh, you know, people are, are talking about spoon bills, for example, right. and duck hunting. You know, Huck Outdoors has a great shirt that somebody wants to put on their back. Right. You know about that. Yeah. You know, We're gonna launch it during that yeah. season. That's right. Get close. Very relatable. And uh, yeah. yeah. But I, I got a question. Who came up with "Show Me Your Duck Hole"? <laughs> I knew. I was wondering when when we were gonna get to that. I knew oh, we were gonna man. get to it at some point. I can't. I, I cannot take credit for it. Um, as bad as I would like to. We were at a show last year. And a guy had a hat on, and yep, yep. I got y'all know what it said. Yeah, y'all yep. seen it. And my marketing mind kind of went to looking at that hat, and and a buddy of mine from Mississippi, he was like, "Show me that duck hole. Yep. You got it. You got to do a hat." <laughs> so, man, it's uh that thing kind of went viral. It could have been. I mean, that's a, that's a spring break shirt. I would have wore it man. on spring break. We, we got some other you things know? coming with that too as well. So. We've been, uh, when you start talking trademarking and, and attorneys yeah. and things like yeah, that, yeah. Woo. yeah. so other that's, people start that's taking your in. money then. There that's locked go. in our name right now. So That's good. That's very good. Yeah, when that first came about, Huck's like, look, we got this new, you know, I know what it is. And it's just, you know, if y'all don't want it in your store, that's fine. Yeah. We were, you know, Lindsay was like, no, it's fine. We can put a few in here. And we couldn't keep them on the shelf. Yeah. Hey, every week we're calling, hey, Huck, need more duck hole hats. <laughs> I don't know how many y'all have sold. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. That's where, um, you know, social media helps out a huge, huge yep. deal. It oh, spreads the word open, so fast, you know. Every yeah. time People I share Instagram, bam, 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 yeah. 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 every time I opened up Instagram, it was one of those hats. Somebody have it on backwards <laughs> or frontwards, or it was standing. It was on their dog's head, or oh yeah, whatever. People I'd never even heard of. I was like, man, that that hat's made it uh, across the nation pretty quickly. It went fast, and That's right. I can't hardly keep them in stock. It, they fly off the shelf. Talking about in them. talking about in stock. How is how is supply on yeah. hats and things? What you're seeing on your side of the business? That's, that's been a struggle. It's mm-hmm. been all year last year, and thank goodness I'm able to stay on top of it enough. You know, notifications from companies when hats drop and getting in touch with that sales rep saying, "Man, please keep me in the loop." Right. You know, 
I'm the little guy, but we'll we'll bite the bullet. That's right. So we were able to uh, we were we're doing pretty good on our inventory. You know, Richardson hats were were a struggle, but we've uh, yeah. we we've done all right with it. What's the so, what's the newest hat that somebody should be looking for? You can say the, the style and yep. what you got coming. What's what somebody like me that's always one step behind what's popular? Yeah. What what do I want next? Uh, all of our American flag hats from com- Memorial Day coming up, Fourth of July, the summer. We like to change colors and mm-hmm. go flags and. I do enjoy the patriotic stuff. Y'all yeah, always patriotic. do a really good job with that. Yeah, patriotic. What what has blown up the most at Huck Outdoors is we have a series of hats that's called the Back Road Edition, and they're the old school flat bill with a rope mm-hmm. on it. Yep. Short, short front, you know, kind of tall, but it's uh, everything we release in that back road series. That was good. Everybody's got to have it. That's All the stores get them. That's they where, love it. That's where I've I age. We all age ourselves out. Yeah, and I'd have said I, I never I, would wear one. I don't wear that hat, <laughs> but I know it's popular. I saw other brands do it too, and I'm like, golly, yep. I'm old. Yep. I'm officially yeah, I'm old you, man. now. I yep. said I would have. You wouldn't catch me in one of them old hats. Love to sell them. Just yeah, I don't wear them. Yep. Come by Simmons Sporting Goods and check out the new A5 semi-auto shotguns from Browning. The best there is. Now back to the Simmons Sporting Goods All Things Hunting podcast. Going back, you said this all started in your living room when you were in March. That was obviously before you were turkey hunting because. If you were in turkey hunting, you wouldn't have been bored during March. And you killed. We're I, got all a store, I, got a, I talked to him in February here at the store. Right. May have been Big Buck weekend. I think so. Would have been the first weekend of March, yeah. Yeah. And um, we were talking about turkey hunting, and um, you were just getting into it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think the dude hunted turkey hunted more than anybody I know. Besides <laughs> not maybe not Kyle, but I think he may have beat Kyle. He might have. I don't know about and that. And he was like, man, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to go to Florida. I got a buddy down there that, that's going to go. I said, you ought to, man. I said, I've been turkey hunting a long time, and I've never been to Florida. would like to. I'd like to go kill one at least. Right. I was going to say, and it's I said, his man, first. you may want to take it. He said, man, I'm thinking about it. It's just a long drive down there, and work's busy, and this and that. Yep. And the next thing I know, <laughs> I seem like he hunted 60 days in a row. <laughs> yeah. Stop. He was in a row. He was state hopping. Man, I this was state, mad at that him. State and I'm like, good night. He went hook line, he went hook line and sinker. <laughs> but his first bird, his first bird was one that all three of us need to to finish a slam. slam. When, that slam. And is the, you know, one of the most sought after subspecies, the Osceola. That's the king of the slam, the Man, Osceola. Ever since yeah. I went down there and got that done, I didn't realize because I'm not I'm not a turkey hunter. Never. Did you hit the slam this year? One away. See, Which we were too. Him? We didn't Marry even try. We didn't yeah. think about it. And we all three were one away. Yeah. We man, all three. That, and I had a solid goal, man. I wanted to do it so bad, but just time and it just ran out. You right. Well, it just runs out. I don't know. I mean, to kill a Louisiana bird's tough. Yeah. I mean, we all three killed a Louisiana mm. bird this year, and that was uh, not me. That's that's pretty <laughs> tough. That is not. I mean, some guys has got them, man. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, where we where we hunt, we don't have them. We don't have many. Kyle's got right. a few. Caleb's got a few. They got some, a but few. we That's work at it. Emphasis on a few, and did work at it. I hunted that same. <sighs> I killed a bird on my farm this year for the first time in 13 years. Killed a bird on our property, and Cole and I hunted him pretty heavy those first couple of days. And he had to leave and go out of town. I actually had him on footage. Twice that had morning, it, uh, t- the, hoping he'd shoot and he couldn't see the bird. Man. Opening morning, had I been sitting where he was, I could have killed him. But I was just one tree up, couldn't see him. Cole's got great hunt, footage man. of he got how many times he gobbled that morning? Two hundred fifty times. I mean, God. maybe you more. couldn't do because mm. I was the most there. I've ever heard of Louisiana turkey gobble. Mm. You couldn't do anything wrong that morning either. And then he would gobble and gobble. He just wouldn't never commit. Cause I, I was sitting there and Cole's like, "What do you think?" I was like, "Man, let's just let's just chill out. Let's don't do anything stupid. We'll soft call every now and then." About three minutes later, I didn't got, didn't got in place. I was like, hey, then we ought to gobble at him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we didn't care. We, we, were, we were hungry. We were ready to go. I was like, dude, try anything you want. Yeah. Anything. Because this sucker is smart. He, let's just see what happens. But anyways, we hunted him. And Cole ended up midweek having to leave and go out of town to film a hunt. And I kept hunting him. And it was that second weekend. I sat down at 545 one morning. He did not say a word, nothing gobbled, nothing did anything until 9 o'clock. He started gobbling, and I killed him at 1045. 
mm. sitting in the same spot. Wow. I mean, it's if you want to run and gun, you know, if after 15 minutes nothing happens in Louisiana, you're probably not going to have very right. much luck. Yeah. Um, you got to put the time in. Yeah. God. It's in the mm. in the like in Louisiana where you can't see very good. Turkeys are always going to see better than you, and if you just run a gun and they're not talking, mm-hmm. you're going you're going to get more seen. than than you know. Yeah. Than not. So. Yeah. That's right. I mean, uh, the turkey cold killed was he had been hunting all day. What one one thirty something like that in Louisiana, and then mm-hmm. now Kyle, he had a bull yearling. We'll call it. He come run in want to fight, <laughs> but no <laughs> show, son. <laughs> Yeah, he had putting a great on his show. I killed a spike turkey. Oh my gosh! A little, little he fooled little me. Nub, but a little short beard turkey. <laughs> anybody <laughs> would have. Anybody would have. I'd have shot that turkey. He yeah. come in full fan, strutting, gobbling. Oh, you just but, couldn't oh. see his beard very good. I'd, uh, he was over a hill. Uh, yeah. And he. Yeah. And actually, you know, on video, if you watch the episode, it looks like he just comes in. I kill him. That's not what happened. It it, it would have been too drawn out long to play it. You know, but. He, he come, we've heard him gobble from the truck. We move around on him. He's gobbling, and there's a big, I know I know the area where I'm hunting like the back of my hands. My family farm hunted, you know, squirrels when I was five. Yeah. You know, I know every tree on that place. And when I hear him, I'm like, there's a big water hole. I'm like, tell Tommy, got him. Tommy's with me. I said, Tommy, he's going around that water hole, and I know he's going to end up on top of this hill 150 yards to our right. we got to get up there. So we move top of the hill, and sure enough, it was clockwork. He, and then when he hears us on top of the hill, then he's like, all right he breaks and comes wow. but he crosses a pipeline and i can't see him real good because there's a hill but he just every time i just touch the car yow, yow, mm. yow. well then he just goes past us and gets gets in in some thicker stuff and he's yow, yow, yow. and i'm like dang he's gone and he comes back and so and then at that point when he comes back it's like as soon as i see his head i'm fixing to shoot him mm-hmm. I'm not gonna let him go by this time again, cause I let him go by the first time. I could have shot him, but the video wasn't perfect. Finally, I said no. And when he come back, I shot him, and go up there, and it's a, it's a daggum. We're gonna call him a Super Jake, <laughs> but he's still a Jake. He was an aggressive but, one. I'll tell oh you yeah, he he. Hey. But we don't have that many turkeys on that farm, and I bet you he owned that was his that yeah. was his turf. He he was the man there, and there's a few hens. So well, at least on your yeah. bird, you at least had some beard. My first one in Florida, I shot it smooth off. <laughs> oh, so I, I I tell you we were uh, yeah we shot we I, but it, Cole will tell you about our, our Henry experience and this is at a turkey tournament but I shot I shot the last one I killed in Texas I shot a lot of his beard off yeah and um, it was I should have mounted the turkey but I didn't because I shot some of his beard off and I really should have put another beard on it yeah but uh, I had it a gold to mount mine and man I was looking for that beard all over the ground I brought back handfuls a little <laughs> hey we found we found a turkey beard. In a food plot a really in good Oklahoma, beard. a yeah. good beard, like just a beard, busted up, laying in pieces, in a food plot, from before the season started. Got to be, I, I'm assuming, and there was no, there's no feathers. I think so it wasn't like a, him or? no, it wasn't, and it wasn't like I don't think somebody shot him, and I don't think it wasn't like a coyote grabbed him. I literally think, and I and I saw this later on in the season. I think turkeys got on him fighting, got him held down, and I guess their foot. Pulling on it, pulled, pulled it the beard off a lot somehow. Of bird, there was a lot of birds in that area. And mm-hmm. They, they fight coming in this food plot just about every day, and fight. I think, yeah, yeah, just just guessing, but literally was walking around the food plot like there's a daggum turkey beard, like That's a ten-inch turkey beard laying here. Wow, That's weird. Mm. I so wish y'all brought that one for me. I glued it on mine. Yep. <laughs> your bird, yeah. he uh, come right in textbook, just like you see on TV and that sort of thing, or he do do turkey things. He did. He did some turkey stuff. It, it 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 happened fast, but in my mind, it was like it was hours. Yeah. But right. it was uh, you know, quick rundown on that is haul tail down there out of Tampa, get there, and I'm road weary as ever. I met up with my buddy Jed Lamb, and uh, he knew the guys that we were gonna hunt with, and we get there, and I meet up, and man, I'm just I'm road weary, God. And the guy says, That's Hey, let's go ahead and get this done now. Let's go this evening. Because I got there. Yeah. I drove halfway, spent the night, and got up and drove on in another sure. eight hours. That's a 10, a 10 11. Oh it's, man. Yeah, 12, 13 hours. Yeah, yeah I've, I've done it. It's tough. And, uh, man, when I got there that evening, it was about 3 o'clock, and that guy said, hey, let's go ahead and get this done now. We'll split up. Chris, you come with me. Jed, I'm going to send you up the road. I was like, we going now? Yeah, <laughs> right now. Get your stuff on. So 
we jump the truck and take off and man i got there and uh met up with this other buddy of his and he said follow me we're gonna go right down in this pasture and try to get it done right now man we shut the door on the truck and all of a sudden i heard turkeys gobbling and i'm like golly this is crazy but uh man we uh as soon as we got out of the truck i had my gun I had my vest and I'm I'm still kind of road weary. This is 30 30 minutes to an hour after I done got there. We're walking out. I get 20 yards from the truck. I said, "Hey, dude, hold up, hold up. I got the wrong shells. My my rete is a three inch turkey gun. Yeah. So and I had three and a halfs in it from last season. So you had three and a halfs in your vest. In my vest. Yeah. So I grabbed those shells and I was like, "Oh shoot, man, I got to go back to the truck." He said, "Don't worry about it. I got some shells, three inch shells." So I grabbed his. Threw them in the gun. One of them felt a little weird. Something, something wasn't right, and the way it shucked that shell. And I'm like, something, something was a little rough there. But whatever. We take off, and man, we get to this 90 degree turn in the pasture, and I look down there, and there's three big old gobblers going at it. And I mean, these suckers to me, first time I'm seeing one getting ready to kill something, and they look like, like T-Rexes God. down there. Oh yeah, it? one of them standing <laughs> up, looked like ET down there. <laughs> little man <laughs> rung out there, and uh. Man, we kind of got settled in. He said, let's just stop right here. And he had him a, a Mojo Strutter deal. And we uh, kind of just hung up right there at the side of that deal. And about that time, them three turkeys got real nervous. And I looked across this pasture, and another monster gobbler is coming out of that just a beautiful green hill. Here he comes, boy, and he's just a strutting and spitting and doing his thing. And <sighs> I'm going, God, this is what everybody talks about, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah. God, you got to be kidding me. So... Trent, my buddy, he just said, man, just sit tight. We don't move, just sit tight. And we kind of watched it all unfold. And evidently that gobbler had whooped these before because these left. How far away are they all? He's 150 yards. Yeah. These are 100 yards. And uh, that, that gobbler, he's coming after him. And he kind of seen us with that fan. Trent started moving that fan around. And boy, he kind of did a little beeline, and there was a barbed wire fence about 100 yards. And that sucker got to that fence and stopped. And he said, we're going to have to belly crawl. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I ain't known this guy for about an hour. So I'm belly crawling. And he said, get right behind me. So, of course, every time he stopped, I'm, I'm looking at the ground, and I'm right up his butt. Yeah. I mean, that, <laughs> if he stopped hard, I'm running right into him. I'm like, hey, dude, sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're trying to get it done. And we finally get up there, and the turkey – went down a barbed wire fence and through a gate that was open would not go under that just blew me away mm -hmm. he would not go under that wire walk down there come through a gate and then got back in line with us and old boy said you got to shoot him he's he's getting real nervous he's he's unfigured out what we are mm -hmm. and he said you put your gun up by the right side of me and when i go to the left kill him well i could see through that little fan God, he's a long way. You know, for me, I'm, I'm not even comfortable with this at this point. And he said, dude, kill him. When he moved out of the way, I come up to shoot. And when he needed to have moved way out of my way because the turkey ended up being 10 yards or so yeah, to, to that direction. You didn't feel comfortable with it. So I shot, bow, and turkey run this way and pitched, went to flying, and I thought, I got him now and my gun. It's jammed. Nothing would happen. I thought, golly, man, I messed this up bad. Messed it up real bad. I've been there. So we did that four or five times this year. Oh, I was leading him <laughs> like he was a goose flying off. You know, I'm ready. I'm ready. I got you. Got Kayla you. My guns hung. Kayla likes to run after him. After really? Yeah, else. Try to close she, the distance to run. Oh, we'll we'll no, get into that man. later. But no. Yeah. But I, uh, I'm just devastated. I'm standing in the middle of this pasture, and I'm like, God, man, I can't believe this. Been here an hour and missed my first turkey I've ever pulled a trigger on. Darn, man, what happened? So we start, you know, we licking our wounds. We walking back to the truck and got them shells shucked out. I said, something ain't right. You know, that when even when I unloaded my gun, it didn't feel right. Grabbed them shells, and I went in my truck, and I got my three-inch shells out, and I set them on the tailgate. Well, first, I grabbed my shells and run them through the gun, and everything did fine. And then I set him on the tailgate, and his shells were about an eighth of an inch longer than my three-inch shells. 
Mm -hmm. Swear to you, and they would not cycle through that gun. Yeah. Mm. I thought, well, okay. So we went on down the road. We ended up finding some more turkeys, knew where they were going to roost, and went back in there the next, well, Jed, my buddy I was with, he killed one that evening. So he's like, hey, I'm ready to go back to Tennessee. Let's let's go. <laughs> so we, uh, we got a game plan and went back the next morning. And sure enough, I mean, the moon was bright. And them turkeys, every little sound that was being made, you know how they they got it. They were all in them woods. That's the best. And I'm going, oh my gosh, you know this today's the day. So loaded that gun up, and we got hid up in a big old oak tree that had fallen down in the side of this cutover. And uh, right when you could, it was daylight enough to start seeing horizon and green grass and everything. You see the colors. Something, I saw something come over my head. Poof! I said, like, holy. What is that? I thought it was a big old buzzard. Turkey. Boom. Jed said, do not move. Don't move. And out of my vision, another one. Poof. Poof. And then way over here, about 100 yards, another one. Poof. Flew out of the woods. And they all just flew out in that pasture and went to doing their deal. And these three kind of congregated. And that single up there, he just kind of hung out. Well, okay. Let's see what's going to happen here. And Jed said, don't, don't move. It's going to happen. And them three left. I'm talking, got out of sight. And I thought, God. Hens? No, they were all, all gobblers. All gobblers. All gobblers. And I'm talking gobblers. Mm -hmm. So that one, when these left, here he come. Here he come. We had one decoy out. And uh, he got out there in line with us, and he acted like he was going to leave. Called at him a little bit, and here he come. Come in there and pow, shot him. Good. Dead as a hammer on that time. That's we like those, it when they flopping. Yeah. Those other shells, that's... Don't ever let anybody give you some equipment you don't know about. Oh, turkey man, hunting. I was because, just like. I mean, I know a guy that gave a guy gave me a uh, shotgun with a duck choke in it during turkey <laughs> Come season. On. Come on. I don't, I'm not going to say his name, but his initials are Cole Barthel. That duck choke has killed over 10 turkeys. That's all I've heard. That's all of it, man. You know how many turkeys that's like. You know how many. Hey, I I don't, killers going to kill, ain't they? Dang right. I've still, <laughs> I've still got that duck choke. I told him he could have it back during duck season. And then. End of duck season, I want it back. Ask Kyle Bearfield what choke pattern, like he patterned 10 different chokes and I it came in number bunch. three. Come on. Came in yeah. the best. It came in right behind. Yeah, I, we won't get in all that uh, this trip, but it, it came in number it. three. Wow. Talk yeah. about the first 10, the first five, something. 10 turkeys I ever killed, I killed with a duck choke. Wow. Extra full. Yeah, my, uh, Unreal. We rigged up some turkey guns this year with red dots and we made them turkey, the turkey killing turkey machines. Killers. But, however, our, one of our good friends, John Odom, he came to Oklahoma, and then made, he drove a long way to Oklahoma. Flew to Oklahoma. Or flew. And he shows up with just his regular duck gun. And I said, no, shoot this gun. And I, I, shoot I, did, this gun. I sold him a turkey choke before he left here. I did. Yeah, I sold said, him a good Jeff a turkey good, choke. Yeah. I, did, I just sold him a good I turkey said, choke. I said, no, we ain't messing with that. Shoot this gun. And we get up on, we get up on a turkey. And I, I'll never, I feel, I'll never feel good. I, mean, I feel terrible at this now. Time to shoot the turkey. Come, time to shoot the turkey. He's about 45 yards. Boom! He shoots, and I'm, and I'm looking at the turkey in my binos, just looking for any little flinch of where, if he hits the turkey, misses the turkey. I want, if he hits, you know, if he shoots the turkey in the leg, I want to be able to see it. Yeah. Boom! He shoots the turkey. Turkey doesn't even act like nothing's wrong. Just, just, just pitches up and goes fly off. And gone, and it was a big, it's a big one too. And we had, we had belly crawled through sand burrs mm. to get up on him and all that. And he's only got like two days to hunt. And I'm like, Dadgum it, Odie, you miss that Dadgum turkey. He's a big turkey, you know. And I'm, mm. I'm kind of giving Odie a hard time about it. And we go back and we go back to camp. We're getting ready to go hunt again. Odie's like, I think we ought to shoot this gun. And I said, Yeah, we might as well. So we put it on the vise and I shoot it, and. You know, out of the targets, it's got the center, and then it's got the ones on the corners. Yeah. We're shooting at the center. At 25 yards, it hits the lower right. Oh, wow. And I'm like, dad, gum it. Mm. Which means at 45, that angle's even worse. So worse. He, he probably missed him by a foot and a half or more because that gun, I just oh, wow. felt terrible. Man, it wasn't meant to be that day whenever I missed him with them barred shells. Because a quick story on that is I had an uncle that took me turkey hunting when I was 16 up in Arkansas, and I fouled up a hunt that day. I had a mosquito right in my face, and I was a young dude, didn't know nothing about it, and I had I had that gun ready, 
but that mosquito was right here, and I kept trying to flick him out of my eye. Well, of course, that turkey's seen mm -hmm. every bit of that. So I didn't get to turkey hunt with my uncle maybe once or twice, never killed a bird, and I, he was a turkey killer. Uncle Stevie was the man when it come to turkeys, and uh, he killed a truckloads of them. But uh, he passed away two Decembers ago. Cancer mm -hmm. got on him, and oh, just he 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 uh, he passed. And that was when I said, "I'm fixing to do this turkey hunt now," because I wanted to do it in memory of him. Sure. Right. And uh, so last season, I did a little bit of hunting by myself, but the shells that I bought. I had wrote his name on one of those shells and always had it in my vest with me. Well, when I got to Florida and had the wrong shells, the guy lets me borrow the shells. One of them hangs up. I miss a bird. The next morning it's dark. I grab my shells, load that gun, and after I killed that turkey that morning, on the way back to the truck, Jed said, man, run back here and get you. Did you get your hole? I said, no, I didn't get my hole. What you want me to get that for? He said, for memories, man. You put your beard in there and glue mm -hmm. it together, and it's your first bird. I said, man, it don't matter. So he ran back over there and got it and brought it to me, and I'm headed to the truck. Halfway to the truck, I'm just fumbling around. I went, holy cow. That's the one he wrote his name it's on? It's that shell that's that awesome. I wrote his name that's on. Cool. That's cool. And that I, that I was cool. like, you got to be kidding me. Yeah, that's good stuff. Uh, yeah, that was pretty cool. That's so why you do it, man, uh, stuff yeah. like that, man. I could not believe that, you know, drive all that way and everything happened that evening before. It just wasn't meant to be. No, no, no. So, it wasn't supposed to happen then. Nope. We've been on hunts like that. I've been on deer hunts like that, too. Really? And it's oh, just yeah. Like, just not meant to be right yep. then. Wasn't That's that true. day. Yep. So I'm going to have all those turkey fans mounted and have have the shell up there. and It's going to look real nice. So you... Him. I you think killed your what was you you killed your Rio and your Eastern and you liked your Merriam? <laughs> liked your right? Merriam. Yep. Did you Where, go after a Merriam? No. I had okay. a trip planned and just yeah. actually was supposed to be there right now, but just couldn't make it. Yeah. Just couldn't make it happen. Too much going on. He'd rather hang out with us than go kill Merriam. Man, yep. it, 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 I heard about this I'm podcast. Sorry about that. I said, well <laughs> <laughs> sorry to hear that. The later it gets, I will say it gets harder and harder, man. It's like you get busier and busier. Man, and, it's and, tough. Uh, late April, early May. This time of the world crisis, the later it gets, the more expensive it gets to yep. drive out there to you. Yep. It's about to, for sure, about to oh, pull yeah. up our bank account with all this driving around. Hunting. Absolutely. So Keep that truck parked. That's right. It's tough. We're that's not going to stop hunting, though. No, no heck no. We'll it's going to have less money. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> but all, those, all these turkey hunts and everything that I do in the outdoors, that's what drives Huck Outdoors. That's I mean, right. That's, that's well, our passion. Since it's your, your first turkey, first official you know, season hunting them hard, mm -hmm. was it what it's cracked up to be? Yeah. I, I, people ask me now, they're like, well, what do you think about duck hunting versus turkey hunting? And I'm okay with missing the first split of duck season if a man told me, hey, you're going to hunt all the turkey season. Oh, bro. I, yeah. I think I could miss no you, November. We're going to have to make you early. a part of, we're going to make you a part of some of our, uh, group conversations Let's that we it. have in we'll Texas. another Kyle yeah. Bearfield then. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I killed, I killed we one. We can talk about it. But. I killed one a week ago, and I texted him and Jordan and Jordan brother because we, we all deer hunt together. Yeah. And I, I get on to them all the time. Or I don't get on to them. I, I talk about it all the time, and I, I love deer hunting. Love it. Yeah. I said, but I really love turkey hunting. And so after I killed a turkey, I texted him. I said, I promise y'all I like turkey hunting more than deer hunting. And they're like, oh, no, you're crazy. Oh, my gosh. You're I love nuts. And I, and, and, but what I follow that up with, and this is what we'll, we'll talk about later in this podcast, is that I like the aspect of growing deer, managing deer, you know, the whole, the whole thing, that. everything involved in deer hunting more than, than turkey hunting. But as far as sitting up against a tree and hunting, I like turkey hunting more. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, but that's where it's we different. Cole's it, like, "Y'all, you're crazy." No, it, you're it, nuts. It, and I love it too. Don't get me wrong. I love the turkey. I mean, I like. I, maybe we throw the word love out a lot, yeah. but I really, really like the turkey hunt. And you I turkey like hunted it. more this year than I ever have probably. And went to a lot of different places, and I filmed more turkeys. I saw more turkeys die this year than I have in a long. I mean, wow. several years. But I will tell you this: it's still. I'm don't it's still deer and duck over it's still turkey. deer duck turkey i'm deer, like, duck, turkey. i'm telling you, i will live and die by the deer 
and then uh, duck will come in after that and turkey. Yep. But I, I mean, I really, really enjoy turkey hunting. That's awesome. I man. do, and it's There's just not my. About it. If I had to pick one that I'm gonna do the rest of my life, it's not. It's not. It's hands down not even a question. The because when I see in the deer hunting, I love the process, but I love the hunting part, seeing mm-hmm. the deer, growing the deer, and I like the kill. They give me a hard time on the killing, but I love the killing part too. Yeah, I don't but, know if he loves killing them. He loves raising them, for sure. Does he no. brag about it? No, no, no. no. He didn't know. He just they. I think more more deer on Cole's place and where Cole hunts and Lisa stuff die of old age and die by <laughs> lead poisoning. <laughs> That's not true because I'll let, Kyle call, I'll let Kyle show up and there'll be five dead in one, uh-huh. not one day. But yeah, but no, I, I just think I don't. I'm and to be honest with you, I'm not sure where Caleb sits on this, but I know the. But but don't get me wrong, man. The turkey hunting, shoot, you want to go yeah. tomorrow? I'm ready. I, know I, I really I know really like it, and and I like. I mean, man, we me and Kyle, we were texting another night. We got theories of we come up with all this crazy stuff. What's going on with turkey hunting? Whether their numbers are up, down, why this and that. I mean, I love thinking about that and talking about that. I mean, he sent me yeah. three different articles the other day I was reading, and I was watching. Another, I love that part of it, too. Yeah. And and we got a bunch of little pieces of property that we hunt in Texas and Oklahoma, too, and we're constantly trying to figure out how we can Get make more. those better for turkeys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and the, we got two pieces in Texas, and it's just for turkey hunt. So I, I really enjoy it, but it doesn't – Yeah. Deer still there. Well, if you got some places just for turkey hunting, all I need is that pin drop. <laughs> <laughs> drop pin. On. Cause there's deer I'm on it, but the deer they don't they don't get over about a hundred <laughs> inches on, on one of them for sure. I'm telling you, man. I I've told many of people the story I told y'all about my first turkey, and I've talked to a lot of people, even that I work with, that they're not hunters, mm-hmm. and they've listened to my story and they love it. Mm-hmm. But they're not hunters. They don't kill nothing. It's and they loved it that story. And it's just a cool deal. So, for me, I mean, it grew, deer and ducks something I grew up doing. I mean, grew up on a rice farm, duck hunting and deer hunting. And I mean, we did it. I mean, my dad, when he hunted every day, every he, he farmed. So when hunting season came around, he hunted. He duck hunted every morning. He deer hunted every evening. Mm-hmm. And I mean, and he took us. You know, as much as we wanted to go, he wanted us to go. There yeah. were, heck, there were several times he'd take us before school and we'd kill them and the ducks and he'd take his buddies back after you wow. know mom took us to school so deer and ducks something that's always been a big part of my life and always will be but turkey hunting i killed my first bird uh right after my senior year of high school in texas on jeff's place jeff simmons place and then i didn't hunt too much afterwards uh just hunted around here some had no idea what i was doing mm-hmm. you know educating more turkeys than i was you know hunting and then Really here, six, seven years ago, something like that, I kind of got back into it. And it's every year there's some, I see a turkey do something I've never seen it do before. So it's a new, it's a new yeah. challenge. And it's, I mean, I'm hooked on it. I'm, I'm, yeah. I, I like it. Now, if if it was during the same time as deer and duck, yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I'm glad it's in the spring and yes, the others are in the fall I'm and so winter. I'm so thankful for that. Yes. Um, I really, really that. enjoy it. And, you know, Cole accomplished a pretty, pretty good feature this year. He got a f- footage of me killing a turkey. He actually had the camera rolling in time <laughs> before I squeezed the trigger. Got it all filmed. Yeah. One of those pieces, probably I was telling you earlier, was just for turkey. He missed one there too. Oh come on! Uh, yeah. With that, yeah. that's a going at duck choke. Yeah, I mean, he had me duck set up. Keep plenty turkeys. <laughs> Modified duck set up. That's what we had. Wicked blend from Browning. The ultimate in waterfowl ammunition, featuring the Wicked Wad system, aerodynamically stabilized for greater downrange energy and extra knockdown power. Loaded with precision bismuth and plated steel shot that delivers high energy retention with consistent tight patterns for cleaner kills and easy retrieves. Wicked blend from Browning, the best there is. Uh, he's shooting that scatter load. Now you talk about textbook. One of the, one of the, the the film he got on the one he got on video. We pulled in a piece of their property in Texas, and me and Cole had just got there. Yeah, textbook hunt. We come in the gate, and uh, it was hot. It was right there mid-April. I mean, like it 90, was the first day it hit ninety-five. That ninety-five day. degrees. Because mm. I'd ask Cole what time I said, what I'm gonna pick you up in the morning. What time you want to get there? He's like, man, just he said, be at my house about seven thirty, eight. Ain't no sense getting in no a hurry. It's gonna be hot. I think I'll be doing nothing. We pull in the gate, 
and uh, when we got to the lead, I text my wife and said, hey, we just made it to the lease. So, you know, we made it. Twelve minutes later, I text her a picture of a dead turkey. Wow. Like, we're, we roll in. And call her, Let's go to the back back here and check, see if we've seen turkey sign. We'll just kind of ride and look and just go slow. And we ride along and did you hear that turkey? Did you hear it? I thought I heard turkey gobbles gobble. Gobbles at the truck. There. And I was wow. like, I was like, yeah. I mean, the air conditioner's on, windows are up, radio. I said, you can hear a turkey gobble. We can't hear it. He's like, stop. I stopped. <laughs> And he was about 60 yards in front of us under a shade tree. If that, yes. Head red, goblin. So I put it in reverse. We ease back out of the way. Jump out, start, you know, before Turkey King says, jump out, start throwing on camo and gear and grabbing stuff, loading gun, decoy, everything. We get, ease around the corner there, sit down, get set up. He's like, all right, I'm good. You good? Okay. I, I hit the slate call one time, yelp, turkey gobble was in my lap. I mean, it was wow. – that's his textbook of hunting as I've ever yeah. been a part of. And I'm of. glad we did it that way because I did tell him, get out of the truck, walk to the front of the truck, kill the turkey. He said, no, <laughs> let's don't do that just yet. Usually it's the opposite yeah, around. That Usually it's like him, him telling me, no. He's like, you want to just, just get out of the truck and go, go towards him and kill him. We had several birds like, there. We were going to try to kill several, and I said, man, get out of the truck and try to kill him. Yeah, we would have killed several. We had five of us walk by us the next that morning. That was Kyle Bearfield's vault, 100%. <laughs> oh, no, that was Cold Caleb, 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 Caleb. He was on Caleb. the camera. I'm just saying, I was ready. I had my safety off. So Cole, I was ready the whole time. I was in killing mode, Cole not was filming, filming. Yeah. Cole, Cole was filming. Me and Kyle were shooting. Me and Kyle were going to try to double. There's five gobblers come by us. At least three. One was for sure Jake. Three were long beards. I don't know. Jury may still be out on the other one. Four of them. Yeah, there's but four. But there was four long beards come by. I said, well, you know, the TV stars here got the mentality that they're supposed to gobble or strut or something for the camera. So, hey, as soon as they're out there in shooting range, I was like, hey, say when, Kyle. <laughs> you ready? And, yeah. Were, uh, 85 to 100 yards. Oh, they wasn't and that And I'm like, far. Caleb, chill. Hang they on wasn't just that far. Well, I mean, you're talking to a man that shot a deer at how far with a crossbow? We can't even tell about that yet. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> That's one. That's one that meant to be things. The morning before that, I missed one at thirty-five. Oh, okay. So meant I got to be. You. So he's a long-distance shooter. So these turkeys, these turkeys, these right. turkeys are story. walking by, and they get, you know, they're, they're gobbling. They they come by again. I mean, they get just closer and closer. Just <laughs> when they get to thirty-eight, and 44, so finally, or finally, yeah, finally, yeah, I said, like that. in your shirt pocket. Yeah, finally, I, I said, I was like, say, I was on them. and I'm on shouldered up. Kyle's right next to me. He's shouldered up, and finally, I say again, I said, say when, Kyle. We sit there a minute, sit there. They get to the cedars, they gone. Okay. I was like, man. I, I thought gotta... they was making, you know how the turkey, they try to backdoor you. Yeah. So I figured they're just looping around. We're fixing to kill them in our lap over here, but not right here. Mm. So, but and they then I got just to thinking, kept on I was going. Like, well, what I should have done was just shot, because Kyle was already shouldered up. He would have had no choice but to follow suit. Camera's yeah. rolling. So. Yeah. yeah. It was one of the deals where I got they it. didn't, they, they were walking. And that's one of them deals where decoy, no decoy. That, you know, some birds don't like the decoy. Yeah. We were some like And it. we had, yeah, we had the hen over to the right, too. So I thought they were going to the right to get toward that hen. Yes, and yeah. and they did not. And they kept going, and they gave us fits all morning, and we didn't kill him. No. Mm. I got redemption on one at the end of the season, though, right there. Big one that I should have mounted. Whose turkey call did you use? Caleb's. Kyle Caleb. told you, it's in the April, Kyle told me, hey, I'm going to bring your turkey call back. I'm like, okay. And I'm getting snapped, you know. Instagram stories. Hey, I got your turkey call. I'm in Texas. Got your turkey call. I'm like, hey, you're using my turkey calls. What you doing? Oh, yeah. His, that, that call killed two or three at least after he That's parted away. He may it. not get that call back. I've got it in my I've, truck right now, but I, I, I ain't brought it in that. here yet. I've noticed. I noticed that. I know you've been here for <laughs> five hours. I still ain't seen my turkey call. You ain't got your gun, your vest, or your call back. Or my beards or fans or meat know, or anything I don't know where from the New Mexico. Is. I don't have the gun. Do I got the gun. Okay. I hope I got the one. Yep. Maybe. It'll be all right. We'll, we'll work it out. We'll work it out. Yeah, talking about, you know, turkey hunting, and we love turkey hunting and the conservation side of it. What can we do to make sure turkey hunting happens better in the future? And that's one thing that me and Cole, we do do a good job of, is everything that we hunt is, it's not about what can we do right now it's always or it's not about how big can we kill deer right now it's how big can we have a, or how can we have a successful year right now but have next year even better mm -hmm. and kind of what we've learned when it comes to turkey hunting and, and this is we're not biologists obviously but we spend enough we spend more time in the woods than most biologists right and we've seen a lot over the years you know hunting is that habitat is key but part of that is 
predator control mm -hmm. that we feel really strongly about. And then Cole hit on something that we are doing uh, and not even knowing it that may be helping turkeys as well. I'll let him say it. But when I, when I talk about predator control, if, if every hunter, and, and not necessarily co coyotes are, they, they kill some turkeys. Bobcats kill some turkeys. But raccoons, possums, and skunks kill more turkeys mm -hmm. than coyotes and bobcats combined really? because they kill them at the egg stage. Mm. And so, like, when a raccoon or skunk nest or predation. possum, they're going to rob that nest. They kill all of them one time. One night's over with. Fox, foxes, too, are real bad about nest predation. We don't have as many foxes. At one place in Texas we do. We need to do a better job of killing them there. But, but we don't have as many foxes everywhere else because coyotes keep them knocked back. Yeah. But raccoons. And so we spend, the, when it's legal, trapping the raccoons with little duke traps hand traps or just we shoot them every chance we get if yeah. we pull up on a feeder and there's a raccoon there boom you know we're shooting yeah. it if, if it's legal and um, i think if every turkey hunter killed three times as many raccoons as they did turkeys every year mm -hmm. they'd see a substantial difference on their on their piece of property mm -hmm. i think we've just this year alone in oklahoma on our piece was probably our best year for turkeys no and us but a lot of that too is managing your own trigger finger mm -hmm. you know if, if your turkey population is hurting and you go in there and you've only got one long beard and you kill him at the beginning of the season and them hens don't have nothing to breed them right you know you're hurting yourself for yeah. the future you're not gonna get anything so we we try to do we try to take our turkey hunting just like we do our deer hunting where we take trail camera inventory you know beforehand and now luckily a lot of the places we hunt it's legal to bait and it's legal to hunt not over the bait. Texas, is the, you, you can hunt over the bait. We don't because we like the, the art form of turkey right, hunting as well. Right. But even in Oklahoma and Louisiana, you can still run feeders and be a certain distance away from it and be legal. It's 200 yards in Louisiana, 100 yards in Oklahoma. But, you know, those feeders, we, we kill the raccoons mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff as well on that. And we think that that helps us manage the, the thing. But using those feeders also helps us take our turkey inventory on trail camera so before the season starts we can say and we did it this year you know in february we might have had 40 long beards spread across our whole property but like turkeys do kind of like deer when the rut hits springtime breeding they're going to bust up those bachelor groups and they're going to go everywhere so you may not have 40 you may only have 20 yeah during during actual turkey season but so we we kind of gauge it but at the same time we may have had 20 jakes so we say, all right, if we got 20 jakes, most of them are going to survive. You know, not all of them. You may lose 10% of them through natural, you know, causes, coyotes, whatever. But if we got 20 jakes coming back next year as longbeards, you know, we can kill. We, we usually kind of try to kill half of those mm -hmm. in longbeards this year. So if we got 20 jakes, we say, well, we can kill 10 longbeards this year, no problem. We're not going to hurt nothing. And that's, we didn't. We didn't read that or learn anywhere. It's just kind of taking our own knowledge and trying Experience. it. Experience. You know, trial, trial and error is what is better. Yeah. And uh, it's been good. But um, I think, you know, that's the main thing, trigger finger and predator control. But one thing Cole brought up that I think we're probably doing too, um, not knowing it if, if you can, I'll let Cole tell it. Well, he's constantly on our mind this time of year because, man, when you see baby, man, seeing baby deer – fawns we don't see baby ducks but right. seeing baby fawn and then seeing and then seeing baby turkey man that's i love to see yeah that. that is what drives me like he said i love right even the turkeys man we saw he sent me some truck and pictures the other day of man it was a good hatch what eight or ten 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 poults ten yeah. poults and uh walking by uh a camera and a feeder in oklahoma and i was like man you know what i started thinking i said man we have a massive coon problem like a massive coon problem during deer season we run feeders almost probably yeah. 10 months out of the year yeah we well, killing us to be honest with me financially but we still do it and um the coon is a problem and we have i mean we have the best great feeders that coons but they find a way to mess you up somehow yeah. We killed, these, the, we killed 50 in the month of february alone raccoons wow. on, our, on the and that's a, so it's number one predator Oh, it is a number one thing. But what we found is that I just started thinking. I was like, man, you know, we run these feeders to try to keep these turkeys on the property, this and that, because we can manage them. If they leave, we probably don't know what happens. Right. We don't have a lot of pressure on us, but still we want them to stay there so we know what's going on. But, but you're fighting coons, because the coons are these eating coons feet. here every night, every single night on trail camera. It is a coon fest all night. Mm. I mean, because they find a way to spin it. They find a way to spin yeah. it. They find a way to get the corn out the feeders. It's tough. And, um... Man, what, what I started thinking, I was like, man, 
honestly, but we kind of positive wanna, to that is this. Yeah. We kind of want to feed these coons right now. I said, Kyle, I texted him some big long tail, and it didn't make a lot of sense. I'll it's not. Honest. It's not legal to kill them in the spring in where we are. So we we're not we can't shoot them or nothing. Can't do anything about it right now. Yeah, yeah but but I told him I said let's keep running these feed. I said look at the coons that are showing up every night. I said when do the coons feed? Most of the time they feed at night. Right. I mean you don't see you see them early in the morning, late in the evening coming to something. I said let's let's keep running these feeders. I said at least till these turkeys can get in the tree. Yeah. Or or, or till they hatch really, because a coon ain't gonna mess with a turkey, correct? Don't you? Yeah, I mean, they, as they soon run, as it hatches, they're it's, not gonna catch them after ten yeah, days. Right. Old, it's not gonna happen. And then uh, Mother Nature, or rain, cool night, something like that may get them, but not when they're little, but not. Mm -hmm. And I said keep, let's keep running these feeders until they hatch. I said because that's gonna keep that coon from going 300 yards over here where that turkey's on the ground with his eggs. It's not going to search as hard for food. Do I think they're going to go sense. find other food? Probably. Will they run across some? Yes. But corn fills you up. If you can save corn will fill birds. Right. Yeah, that's what. That's the thing, man. And, and everybody, oh, we got too many hands. You got to, never have too many hands. Yeah. Mm -mm. Never yeah. have too many hands. And, and you may think, you're crazy. No, because it is a wildlife miracle, in my opinion, for a turkey to make it. If you go through the whole yeah. process and you can study what's his name, who I think is really good. Kyle really likes Dr. him. Grant Woods. At a, at a Missouri man on his turkey philosophies and he's pretty dead on on that, man. It is a wildlife miracle for a turkey to make it and, and for you to get to harvest one and kill a mature bird and put him on a wall or something, man. It really yeah. is special. And I was like, man, let's keep spinning these feeders until these turkeys hatch and feed them, feed them something to get their mind. Yeah, off we don't, that right. we don't want them at night going, makes sense. going to that run those, sense. those hens off their, their nest laying yeah. on those eggs because they're down there with them and they've already got to fight everything else right. and uh, i was like man let's just keep them eating this corn yeah bump it we're losing money yeah we are but we may be saving us 10 long beers right. next year 20 long beers. Right. we don't know that makes a so, lot of sense i don't know if for it, sure we just we think crazy like that and for a dang turkey but we'll we, we like it that's what we do so well i love it so much i'll do whatever i don't know i'm save with them. <laughs> i'm with you on that now, i tell you something i saw a video of the other day was a guy talking about this stuff and he was saying a long long time ago that everything say if uh, a forest got thinned out for small pines or whatever that it got burned out all the underbrush would get burned out right. his philosophy is now you don't see that near as much but you see all this thick growth, and a turkey can't get up and escape from a predator. That's right. There's, there, I think there's, there's a lot to that. There's good and bads to that. You may have been watching something, and Kyle's a lot better. He studies that stuff a lot, but yeah. you need both. The guy kind of made a point. You know, I was like, heck, he's on to something, you know, maybe. Mm -hmm. So, who knows? You need the, you know, I think you need, like Cole said, you need both. You need the thick for the hens to be able to hide right. their nest. But you yeah. also need the big open you know, for one, they like to go out in it and strut, and two, yeah. they can they can get up. If fly they need from to get them. away from that bobcat or something like that, they gotta they gotta yeah. run fast and fly. That's what, and a lot of times you'll see turkey winter somewhere, and it'll be spring somewhere in a different area, for different reasons in the in the winter time too. They need they need shelter from the cold and the wind. It's a little thicker, is better down in the valleys. Then the opposite, it'll get too hot in that thick stuff in the summertime. Yeah, you know, so that's in the springtime they want to strut, and part of their breeding process they get out in the open. Okay. That's what that burn. Well, if you go hunting with that burn guys, stuff's perfect during the spring and summer. Just like you go hunting with guys you don't know sometimes, and they'll be like, "Man, this is where they were during deer season." My automatic red flag goes up in my head. And I'm like, yep. "Oh shoot, we they may they not, may not be man, here now. because yeah. it is a totally." Now I will say parts of like, and, I, and I'll pick on Texas a little bit. It's a little different there, I would say, but not fully. If if it's all the same mesquites, maybe it's not. But there's some right. places out there that's got big valleys and big everything. It's a little different, but other places. Man, that's not true. If you got them here in deer season, they may be a half a mile, mile, three miles, and I'm like, uh oh, man, they may heard. not be here. So, yep. especially around here in Louisiana, oh, they say, yeah. man, if you got turkeys deer in deer season, don't you won't be hunting there during the spring because they won't you be. You better there. keep. You better not give up from deer season, turkey season without scouting them and right. knowing. It. Don't just take for granted they're gonna be there. Ain't that something? No, it's crazy. They're that's a right. they're a peculiar animal. You are exactly right. And then you may have them, and turkeys roam too. I mean. If you didn't have them during deer, deer season or this or that, and Caleb, I don't know if Caleb did during deer no. season, and he had, I mean, several long beards this year, and several. We I mean, had, and they just uh, showed up yeah. at, in February, March, and, and it was just like, man. Yeah. So yeah. check it. No matter what, just you got to scout them early. I'll tell you what I loved about turkey hunting is every single time you kill a turkey, there is, it's unlike the first story oh, or the right. second story. Oh, or yeah. the 
it's never the same. No. Right. Nothing. No, it, it's different every single time. And we're talking about all the killing and good, but I'll tell you one thing that drives me nuts is a no goblin turkey. <laughs> is a no goblin turkey make me want to go home faster than anything <laughs> in the world. That's where my you love ex- for turkey accept. that's where my love for turkey hunting goes down. You're not deer hunting them. I will if I have to, but I don't want to. Yeah. I'm not ground blind hunting them. Right. No. Yeah. Uh-uh. You can take me I back to the. I don't the, know how well I'd like that. Mm, I don't know about that. Oh, I, I want to be under that tree. And yeah. I'm not knocking anybody that does. Don't get me wrong. I got two little boys. If we have to kill one out of a ground blind coming up, then we will do yeah. it. Yeah, right. But, um, yeah. We've we, we done some deer hunting, some turkeys. It's just, that's what Cole's always like. I'm, I ain't deer hunting no turkey. I said, well, you not killed. That was before season. I was like, well, you ain't never going to kill one in Louisiana. Well, and, and, and a lot of your terrain, a lot of your terrain, you got to go off that. Like, there's places in Oklahoma. Once you get, you, we go to a certain place. If we don't kill them early, we can't move on them. They can see us just about anywhere we go. So we got to, mm-hmm. you got to wait them out. And yeah. it's like, it is what it is, though. Yeah. Well, I, I went hunting with uh, Josh Beckham two years ago. Yeah. And he don't deer hunt them. <laughs> Josh don't deer hunt nothing. I don't I think he ever him, sits down. I told him, I said, man, I done wore these boots. I, I didn't know we needed some Nike shoes, man. You done wore me slap out today. Uh, Six, eight miles of walking. Yeah. It's crazy. Come by Summit Sporting Goods and check out the new models of the X-Bolt rifle from Browning. The best there is. Now back to the Simmons Sporting Goods All Things Hunting Podcast. As welcome back to the Simmons Sporting Goods All Things Hunting Podcast with our buddy Chris Huckabee from Huck Outdoors and Huck got into the turkey hunting this year. We done hit on that a little bit, and all uh, all four of us really had a very successful turkey season. Thankful for it. And did you? My favorite part, though, of turkey season is eating the turkeys. Have you eaten mm. any of them turkeys that you mm. you harvested this year? If Chick Fil A served turkey nuggets, <laughs> wild turkey nuggets. <laughs> They, they would uh, they put that chicken to the side. It's good. Well, oh then, then Cole would be trying to figure out how to get rid of Chick Fil A instead of Coons because <laughs> we would not have any turkeys left after that. That's, Man, yeah. I'm with you on that. Too. My that's, my that's wife thought uh, she thought Brittany thought that I hunted too much traveling turkey hunting this year until uh, a couple of nights ago. I fried up some for the first time this year, and she was she was like, "Is this turkey season is open anywhere left?" I was like, "Well, we make." Maine, baby, pack yeah, my stuff. I'll roll out in the morning. We can make one more trip. Yeah, we roll out in the morning. Yeah, I, I put a post out there that said, hey, I'm, I killed my first one. How do you cook your son gun? And everybody said turkey nuggets. Oh, yeah. Turkey yeah. nuggets. That's uh, Devin, actually, I saw a post, and I think Kyle's going to do something with, uh, like, the legs and leg quarters. He did, like, some street tacos, like, pulled yeah. pulled the meat and did it up. And it's it's uh that is Devin we're process. talking about too though. Yeah, it's 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 one of them things where you make the most of of what you kill be, type situation. It's 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 not worth the effort. Yeah. You know, and everybody that says, Man, it's the best thing they like. Well, it's like in snow geese, everybody says, Man, yeah. you keep them thighs and legs and cook them down. They, they That's lie. too much work. But no, so, but like, it is fine, it's good. Yeah, those I mean. turkey nuggets are they are hard to beat. Hard it's to the beat. jam. We've air, we've air fried one that we plucked one time and it was good. Yeah, air fried. Not air fried. Uh, deep fried. Deep in the, fried. Yeah, in the big, so. not air fried. Yeah, I almost said air fried. Deep you might be onto something with air fryer though. Could do it if you had a Could. big enough one. Man, I'm I'm more about to oil fryer myself. Oh, yeah. Too. yeah, three or four. My wife just told me we have an air fryer. I didn't even know that. I got my wife one for Mother's Day, and I will. How, so here's where the air fryer comes in with your turkey nuggets. As you know how used to your turkey nuggets or your fried deer steak or whatever. You get done eating that night, and you're going to put the leftovers up. You put them in a Ziploc, stick them in the refrigerator. The next day, they're soggy. Yeah. You can pop them in that air fryer for like two minutes, and they taste like they just came out of the grease. That's good. For wow. Reheating fried wild game, it's a game changer. Now, somebody may have been playing a joke on me. I have a recipe that somebody said, take a bag of Doritos and crunch them as fine as you can get it and put that turkey meat in there and make your turkey nugget in Dorito try. chips that you've crunched up. And I, they say it's amazing. So I've I still I've heard of it. I like Doritos. I so. hadn't heard of it, but <laughs> I like Doritos. I may try. I stick to my dad's old recipe, and it's super simple. It's you soak your turkey nuggets in buttermilk, and then yep. you roll them through Zatarain's chicken fry. Mm. 
and fry them up. Sounds good. Fry them up till they're golden brown. There's, it's, I mean, if Talk, it ain't broke, don't fix really it. Good. Talking about the Doritos is something weird I do. You know the, um, the pistachios at the gas stations and stuff that you can buy that are already shelled. Yep. The chili roasted ones, the red one in the red package. If you take those and you've got something you can crush them with, crush them up into a fine powder, put yep. them on top of a steak. Come on. Lights out. How would mm. you even think of that? I don't know why I thought of it, I but I did one time. I was going to say, where did like, you get that from? Golly, it's good. I promise. Try mm. it. Probably Damn. be good on turkey, too. But I, I ain't tried on turkey yet. I'm hungry, ain't <laughs> Yeah, no doubt. We no have doubt. grilled some, too. I mean, fried is the way to go for wild turkey, period. But it's not. It's, There's it's a pretty lot. good on the grill if you trim it up and get all the so I did stuff a, out of it. Uh, There's a lot of good recipes out there. Not long ago, and I think it's on our blog, on Center Sporting News blog, I I did when I did the recipe. I did a wild turkey cordon blue where I took the whole breast and kind of matted it out flat. Got some thick pieces of ham and put it in there, and Swiss cheese and rolled it and wrapped it in bacon and smoked it, mm. and then like rubbed it down like a barbecue seasoning. Before I did, come on. But I mean, while we're on this discussion, anybody's got any turkey recipes, you can drop them in the yeah, comments yeah. on this YouTube video yeah. and we'll, send them uh, on social media. However, just get them to us. We won't try. Yeah, we won't. Yep. And if you got turkeys where you're at, that let us know. We'll come know where you're at. And we'll hey. come help you kill them. Exactly. <laughs> we'll and we can use your recipe at your house. We'll be glad to do so. <laughs> we'll be glad to do so. I'll tell you one thing I'll, I'll get on my soapbox for a second about is that um, if you listen to this podcast and you, you listen to Huck talk about his first turkey kill, you know, and how excited you were to kill one, and, and that goes for anybody. It goes for me if my – 25th or 30 turkey have killed you know yeah you know, caleb's cold anything we sitting around this table and I'm, I'm including you in this i know i know you i know you are but if it's legal to do it and you enjoy doing it you should be able to do it i agree one thing you see on on social media right now is people telling other hunters how to turkey hunt yeah. or how they should or shouldn't turkey hunt or all that and and that's that's just stupid yeah and dumb you know especially and, they, and they're blaming certain methods of turkey hunting fanning right as part of the the process of why turkeys are no longer here as, as much and all that and you know if you want to do research and study like we like we talk about on why why or how can i make my turkey hunting better you know for the future use real scientific evidence don't just use joe blow's hearsay. comments hearsay yeah you know and stuff but more importantly than that is that don't be against you know other hunters right and talking about you know you shouldn't have used a strut and decoy to kill a turkey don't say stupid yeah. stuff like that you know that gets on our posts and stuff it's it's bad and so you saw it on waddell's posts and philip culpepper's posts mojo's posts especially yeah. you know i got run through the ringer a few times because we'll be behind a product, fan, you know, for the product or something just from people that that just they don't like it. So, you know, if they don't like it, so what? Well, don't I matter. Don't do That's it on fine. your property. I don't do it. Yeah. Yep. I'm, I can tell you, I'm the biggest turkey hunt. I'm the rookie of this group, and two times with me killing them turkeys, and I've had a fan, and that turkey wanted to come whoop me, and I'm thinking, this. I mean, That's exciting, man. It's exciting, and for somebody to frown on it, I'm like, well. Well, we've yeah. done it a lot too, and Kyle tell you too, it don't always work. It don't. No, no, no. It don't. That first time, I, I mean, I was busted. He, he was ready to leave, but yeah. So I don't know, it's, man. I'm, I'm a rookie at it. And if, if you know, it's up to the states to set the laws. If, if they set the laws that allowing people to kill too many turkeys, then, then the states have to adjust it. They need to, but yeah. if you're, if you're following the law, it doesn't matter, in my opinion, how you kill the mm. turkey. Kill the turkey the way that makes you happy and makes you enjoy what you do. You work too right. hard in your other jobs and all that. Enjoy your time out there. Right. Deer, de and that right. goes for deer, ducks, too. Same yeah, thing. everything. You same know, thing. and another thing I look at is the people that was here long before us that was killing animals, Indians. and Exactly. And, and let's, you know. Exactly. That's, and that's, there that's was the no I, method. Well, yes, but, but what I'm, you know, well, I'll, I'll key on that is that um, – somebody some a lot of people not just somebody a lot of people say that people just started fanning turkeys like the past couple of years because they just started seeing it on social media yeah but i guarantee you a whole bunch of turkeys got killed back in cowboys and indians oh, time yeah. 
with a turkey fan. Mm-hmm. You Dang know, right they did. still here. Guarantee it. Yep. You know, we didn't just start doing it a couple of years ago, and that's why the turkeys are right. all of a sudden, you know, populations down. That ain't, that ain't right. the way it worked. Yep, for sure. I'll steal, uh, steal some words from some friends of ours that have been on this podcast, said this on this podcast. Devin Singleton says, hunt how you want to hunt. And I love that. And then Rusty Creasy always harps on, if you ain't got nothing nice to say, just don't say nothing at all. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yep. I kind of feel the same way about fellow hunters. And like Kyle said, if it's a legal method of taking a turkey, duck, dove, deer, whatever, and you enjoy doing it, then good for you. Yep. And our biggest slogan at Huck Outdoors is live for it. Live for it. That's what we do. I like it. uh, We're going to wrap this up. Like I said, Huck, we appreciate you coming. How anybody that is not following you on social media or don't know where to find you, where – where all can they find you, website, social media, and all that stuff? Yeah, we're on all the socials, uh, Huck Outdoors, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, on the website, huckoutdoors.net. So mm. Come shop out here at Simmons Sporting Goods. That's right. Got a huge supply. Yep, yep. yep. Show me that duck hole. You're right. <laughs> Show me that <laughs> turkey nest. I appreciate it, it fellas. Man. That was fun. Right. Thank you, man. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all. What is it that distinguishes the best? A wanting to defy reason, disrupt industry, and captivate the imagination. To be better, you should look further, dream bigger, aspire by bandit, superior.